Make sure you have Lesson 30 pulled up, The Last Days of King David, and your Bibles are open to 1 Kings chapter 2. We will be looking a little bit at uh, 1 Chronicles chapters 20, 29, so hopefully you've got something, a bookmark or something spaced in there as well. All right, so we left off. Uh, David hadn't been feeling the best. Uh, he got no heat, so they had to bring in another young woman just to lie in bed with him to give him heat. And then we saw the sin uh, of his son, Adonijah, with trying to make himself the king, taking advantage of his father's sickness and weakness, thinking maybe he'll soon be dead, and him knowing that Solomon should be made king. Nathan and Bathsheba, uh, they got uh, involved, and they made sure that Solomon became king because he was the Lord's choice for the next king, not man's choice. And so Solomon is made king in a somewhat uh, public ceremony, uh, but nothing we should say officially yet in that sense. But uh, before all the people, that will still come today. But Adonijah has had to be humble before Solomon. He's asked for his life. Solomon has granted it as long as he behaves. So that's where we last left off yesterday. So David, we, we said in yesterday's lesson towards the end, he, he kind of... Uh, re-energized himself. We saw that the Lord kind of gave him some strength once again, and that continues in today's lesson. We want to see how the Lord gives David some final strength to make sure he can close up or tie up any loose ends here. So, uh, 1 Kings chapter 2. Okay? Now the days of David drew nigh that he should die. And he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest. And whithersoever thou turnest thyself, that the Lord may continue his word which he spake concerning me, saying, if thy children take heed to their way, to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul, there shall not fail thee, said he, a man on the throne of Israel. Moreover, thou knowest also what Joab, the son of Zariah, did to me, and what he did to the two captains of the host of Israel. Unto Abner, the son of Ner, and unto Amasa, the son of Jether, whom he slew, and shed the blood of war in peace, and put the blood of war upon his girdle that was about his loins and in his shoes that were on his feet. Do therefore according to thy wisdom, and let not his whorehead go down to the grave in peace. But show kindness unto the sons of Barzillai, the Gileadite, and let them be of those that eat at thy table. For so they came to me when I fled because of Absalom thy brother. And behold, thou hast with thee Shimei, the son of Gera, a Benjamite, a Bahuram, which cursed me with a grievous curse in the day when I went to Maenaim. But he came down to meet me at the Jordan, and I swear to him by the Lord, saying, I would not put thee to death with the sword. Now we remember a few things. Uh, early on in David's uh, rule as king, he had requested, in fact, he thought, he didn't even request was. He thought, look at my house, a beautiful, big, bold house, and, and look at that tent that the Lord's Ark is in. Let me build the Lord a beautiful house just like mine. And the Lord uh, had to send to the prophet and say, no, go back and tell David he's not going to do that. So we know that that had been happened. The reason for that was that David had shed so much blood, the Bible tells us. David had been a bloody man, a man of war. Solomon will be a man of peace. So the Lord grants to Solomon permission, or the privilege of building the temple. And it's often called Solomon's temple, but we'll see today why we might be able to also call it David's temple. Okay? But we call it Solomon's uh, table. But anyways, uh, Solomon, uh, he's a young man. We, we believe he's not yet 20 years old, so he needs some wisdom, and he also needs some guidance uh, from his father. Okay. So, uh, some of the instructions uh, that David gives here, and I guess on your sheets I'm skipping down there a little bit low, maybe, I don't know if it's four or five there, but anyways, 
he gives a few directions uh, to Solomon here. He says, "Well, we could really we could split it up into three into three day things. Remember Joab. He was an evil man. He killed two other men, murdered them. Don't trust him. Okay? Uh, use wisdom with Joab. Maybe even bring him to justice." Make his life miserable. Don't let him go down to his grave in peace. Now, the question you and I might have is, well, David, why don't you take care of it? Well, because it's going to be something for Solomon. He's now the king. Solomon is going to have to deal with it. David should have dealt with it, but he didn't. So that's one thing he has to do. Second thing of wisdom, continue to be kind to the sons of Barzillai. He had helped me when I was fleeing from Absalom, your brother, half-brother. Uh, so allow uh, those sons in Barzillai to, to eat at your table and be in peace. Okay. And David also uh, said, look, I had promised not to kill that guy Shimei. Remember the guy who said all the cursings toward David? I promised not to uh, say anything or, or kill him, uh, but I need you to because he is not living a proper and good life. So that's going to be another issue that Solomon is going to, as now the king, the, the sword is with Solomon. The Lord gives him permission to put these kind of people to death, as we read here. So, uh, David had been weak. He should have dealt with those issues, but he didn't. So now they become King Solomon's issues. As we said, um, issues that are going on right now, President Obama is responsible for them, but when he steps down and uh, President-elect Trump takes his place, he inherits those problems. And they are now his responsibility before the Lord. And the Lord is going to demand of uh, President-elect Trump when he becomes president that he deal with them according to his word, according to God's law. Will he? kind of doubt it, but uh, that's why we pray for him to, to do those things. All right, go and jump in your Bibles to 1 Chronicles uh, chapter 22. We're going we're to do a little jumping around here in 1 Chronicles because David here gives... Uh, some guidance to his son Solomon regarding the building of the temple. So this gets back, probably you can scroll back up to the top there when we're looking about some things. So let me read a few instructions here. First Chronicles chapter 22, I'm going to read some of the first verses here. Then David said, this is the house of the Lord God, and this is the altar of the burnt offering for Israel, meaning these are the instructions for them. And David commanded to gather together the strangers that were in the land of Israel, and he set masons to hew wrought stones to build the house of God. And David prepared iron in the abundance for the nails of the doors of the gates and for the joinings, and brass in abundance without weight. Also cedar trees in abundance for the Zidonians, and they of Tyre brought much cedar wood to David. And David said, Solomon, my son, is young and tender, and the house that is to be built for the Lord must be exceeding magnifical of fame and of glory throughout all countries. I will, therefore, now make preparation for it. So David prepared abundantly before his death. Then he called for Solomon his son and charged him to build an house for the Lord God of Israel. And David said to Solomon, My son, as for me, it was in my mind to build an house unto the name of the Lord my God. But the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Thou hast shed blood abundantly and hast made great wars. Thou shalt not build an house unto my name, because thou hast shed much blood upon the earth in my sight. So we see some of, of those things going on here. Like we said, he's got too much, he's shed too much blood. But Solomon is young. Uh, he needs to be instructed. So this is a, this is a huge task. And it's going to distract the people of Israel. So where can he find the workers? The workers should be the servants. Maybe, maybe some of the groups of the Philistines that have been captured. Maybe some of the Moabites, some of the Edomites. Some of the men who are servants to the people of Israel, because they've been captured, use them. All right? You'll be able to get all these strangers. Let them do the heavy work. And what are some things that he gathered? Well, it looks like he gathered iron for nails and gold and silver and brass in great abundance so that they can be melted to form things and cover things. He got cedar trees. Any of you, any of your parents or grandparents have cedar chests at home? Pop them open. Take a big whiff. It's a very strong, pungent smell. But the, pro, the, the, the blessing of cedar wood is that it can stand time. It doesn't rot like a regular wood, even getting wet. 
And obviously the temple is going to be out in the open. So what type of wood could they use? Well, cedar wood would not only be a nice sweet smell in the house when you walked in, but it also, in addition to be a nice being a nice sweet smell, is that it would be something that would preserve it. Okay? Uh, David also set up some schedules here uh, of the Levites. There were many Levites who are going to have to do some work. So David uh, arranged some rotating schedules so that some would offer sacrifices. Some turn it would be to do the incense. Others would be, uh, their job would be to bake and to replace the showbread. Others would work as porters, carrying things and moving things around. Others would take care of all the treasures, the gold and the silver and everything else that was prepared. Others might act as some officers or judges there in the church. And others would be the accompanists. And they all need to learn all of the tasks. And there would be a regular schedule of rotation so that they would do all those. So David set that as well. Now, if you turn in your Bible to 1 Chronicles chapter 28, we're getting to the end of 1 Chronicles here because it's to the end of David's life. Uh, again, I'm going to read a few verses here at the beginning of First Chronicles chapter 28. A few uh, important instructions regarding uh, the worship of the people and David's feelings that way. So chapter 28 of First Chronicles verse 1. And David assembled all the princes of Israel, the princes of the tribes, and the captains of the companies that ministered to the king of cor- by course. And the captains over thousands, and the captains over hundreds, and the stewards over all the substance and possessions of the king, and of his sons, and with the officers, and with the mighty valiant men, and with all the valiant men unto Jerusalem. Then David the king stood up upon his feet, and said, Hear me, my brethren and my people. As for me, I had mine heart to build an house of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and for the footstool of our God, and had made ready for the building. And God said, But God said to me, Thou shalt not build an house for my name, because thou hast been a man of war and hast shed blood. Howbeit the Lord God of Israel chose me before all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever. Meaning his line will continue. For he hath chosen Judah to be the ruler. And of the house of Judah and of the house of my father and among the sons of my father he liked me to make me king over all Israel. And of all my sons, for the Lord hath given me many sons, he hath chosen Solomon, my son, to sit upon the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. And he saith unto me, Solomon, thy son, shall build my house and my courts, for I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. Moreover, I will establish his kingdom forever, if he be constant to do my commandments and my judgments, as at this day. Now therefore, in the sight of all Israel, the congregation of the Lord, And in the audience of our God, keep and seek for all the commandments of the Lord your God, that ye may possess this good land and leave it for an inheritance for your children after you forever. David here has called all of the people together, the rulers and the princes and the leaders, come! Solomon's been anointed king, and there's been a little bit, but the people didn't have time to come together, and now he gathers them all together, and David is now turning over the kingship publicly to all of them, and he's also publicly giving them direction and instructions about how they are to treat his son. Okay? And he again, he reminds them here, just like he told Solomon, I can't build the house of the Lord because I am too bloody. He's given it to my son Solomon. Obey them. Obey the laws of the Lord. The Lord has given you a covenant promise. That's your inheritance, that beautiful covenant promise. Don't waste it. Don't destroy it by living in sin and wickedness and the heathen around you. So that's one thing he says. And then he says and, and uh, proceeds to, to tell them how they ought to now obey his son. He had many sons. Absalom and Adonijah tried to become kings and God didn't want them to. God has chosen Solomon. Solomon, my son, is chosen by God. Obey him. So that's another thing that he gives here. Okay? So David has to understand that. And then David gives to his son uh, Solomon the patterns. Uh, The Lord had given unto David the patterns. We kind of might say like drawings today uh, that are done for a building. If you're going to build a house, you need some drawings. You need an architect to draw something up. Well, the same thing here. There are drawings that have been given or, or designs that have been given, directions given to King David. And he passes those along to Solomon. Okay? 
And then finally, if you turn the page in your Bibles, probably for most of you at least, First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 1, we see it finally happen here. Solomon is made king. So Second Chronicles, First Chronicles 29, verse 1. Furthermore, David the king said unto all the congregation, Solomon, my son, whom alone God hath chosen, is yet young and tender, and the work is great. For the palace is not for man, but for the Lord God. And then uh, if you turn, uh, starting at verse 22, we see the, the great celebration here. And did eat and drink, so this is talking about Israel, and did eat and drink before the Lord on that day with great gladness, and they made Solomon the son of David king the second time. So he's once again, God save King Solomon, and anointed him unto the Lord to be chief governor, and Zadok to be priest. Then Solomon sat on the throne of the Lord as king instead of David his father, and prospered, and all Israel obeyed him. And all the princes and all the mighty men and all the sons likewise of King David submitted themselves unto Solomon the king. And the Lord magnified Solomon exceedingly in the sight of all Israel and bestowed upon him such royal majesty as had not been on any king before him in Israel. Thus David the son of Jesse reigned over all Israel. And the time that he reigned over Israel was forty years. He, seven years reigned he in Hebron and thirty and three years reigned he in Jerusalem. So, there's a beautiful, we skipped over a lot of stuff, but there's a beautiful uh, bit of this chapter. It'd be a good one to use for some personal devotions. Solomon was young and tender. He could not accomplish this work alone. He was going to need the people to be on his side and to support him. And that is what King David asked for here. Please support my son Solomon. Okay. Uh, David then witnesses to the people. He says, look, I have gathered much gold and silver and bronze. I have been blessed, richly blessed. And I have given that for the temple. I've Of my own personal wealth, I've given to the temple so that it can be built. It can be a beautiful house of God. That's a good godly example that Solomon, or David sets for the people. I pray your parents do the same. Set, they set good godly examples. Maybe you earn a little bit of money at a job. Hopefully they tell you. That's a blessing from the Lord, that financial gain that you've had. Some of that needs to go to the Lord. That is the Lord's that he's given to you. Now you be wise and do with that what the Lord desires you to do with it. What do you desire? Well, the Bible demands that we give it to him, some to him, back to him. So you have opportunity to do that. So David sets that good example here. David blesses the people. And they have a ceremony a second time where uh, Solomon is made king. He now sits on the throne. And this time it happens in the presence of all leaders. So there can be no question about who is the next king of the twelve tribes. And that is Solomon. So Solomon becomes the next king. And then we read here after all of that and after the blessings that David gives. David dies. After 40 years of reigning. Seven years in Hebron and then 30 and three years in Jerusalem. David now passes away. He's ruled over Israel for 40 years. A blessing. Right? 